Mount Elders. First step is her mother, Yvette Ray Durandow. Transitions into young womanhood. And traditionally in DC, people have been um, welcomed into their community or transitioned into this phase of their lives through deputants or some type of um, transitioning ceremony into our society and the community. So I had a few things that I wanted to share. Um, we're all here to celebrate this important milestone in the life of Dana Downs. And I view this day as an acknowledgement of her right of passage from a young girl to a young woman. And as she turns 16, I reflect on my life and her life, and I pray that her father and I have provided her with the essentials for a productive and happy life. These aren't things like iPods and laptops. This is the concept of caring for people and the world around you and the love of the Lord. We chose the name Dana, and I'm sure someone will have a comment about why we chose that name later. But we chose the name Dana because it's a derivative of Danielle, and Danielle comes from Daniel, meaning God is my judge. And we wanted her to embody the devotion to God as well as great strength and leadership. And this name seems very fitting for her. As Dana has grown to be a strong and caring and empathetic person, I have no doubt that she will find true happiness because she views the world with love and she always looks for understanding of others. So, something that's important to me is history and legacy, and I'm really happy to say that Dana has a very um, full and rich legacy, and she, she can, we have a lot of family reunions and we trace back a lot of family history on both sides of our families, and so she knows a lot about where she comes from and how important that is. So from Louisiana to Texas to Charlottesville to Bermuda, our families have overcome all sorts of obstacles that this country often places in front of African American families. But utilizing their talents, our families have earned college and postgraduate degrees in days when the average black American didn't even finish high school, or the average American for that matter. Um, Danacy has a legacy of education and community service, and I'm very happy for that. And I hope that that um, is something that teaches her and sustains her. So, as we are very thankful to our ancestral mothers and fathers, and we thank you because of the undying love and boldness and heroism that we now have, uh, we have had, has led to having the first African American in the White House. Uh, the same White House where many of our forefathers built um, over 200 years ago. Because of the strong love and, and family bonds that we receive from our strong legacies, we're here to bring our precious Dana into the community of young women. So I wanted to acknowledge our sacred mothers and fathers that we haven't forgotten them and that we thank them. So, let's see. I guess um, I just want to say that it's with great pride that um, I hope that our community will all rejoice and, um, you know, as we take this opportunity to bring my baby girl into the world and welcome her as a young woman of Washingtonian, my daughter Dana Dennis. I love you, Dana. Okay, so the next thing we have on the list, we're going to hear from Johnny Lady Rock, her grandmother.
that I am very pleased that you are that because you are. Smart, talented, beautiful, and very creative. And all the things that I wish you to be and wish I were. So I would just like to say congratulations. I love you. And I will always cherish you as my family. Dana Dane. <laughs> Please don't think of me only as your godmother and your favorite aunt, <laughs> but also as your friend. And know you can come to me at any time with your, with your teenage girl questions. I don't call myself an expert, but after going through it three times with three totally different teenage personalities, I just might be able to give you some pretty good advice. I still can't believe that you're 16. You were always the baby, and now you are well on your way to adulthood. So hard to believe. When I was thinking of what kind of advice or inspirational message I could give you today, I came up with several keywords, and when most of them were representative of the letters of your name, I decided to continue down that path. I've used several famous quotes, which you may recognize, but I won't cite their authors in every case. So please don't consider this plagiarism, but instead real world experience being shared with you on this, your 16th birthday celebration. So I'm gonna start with, of course, the letter D for determination. It doesn't matter how many say it can't be done or how many had tried it before. It's important to realize that whatever you're doing is your first attempt, it's your first attempt at it. Never let the odds keep you from doing what you know in your heart you were meant to do. First, say to yourself what you would be and then just do what you have to do. As Winston Churchill once said, the pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity, but the optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. A, for assertiveness. It is not what you do, but who you are. You must believe in yourself or no one else will believe in you. Always be self-confident self-reliant, and even if you don't make it, you know you will have done your best. Most importantly, never give up. Okay. The why? Youthful. For now. <laughs> For now. The most powerful relationship you will have in life is the relationship you have with yourself. Start now making that relationship a meaningful one. Strive to enjoy every minute and make good choices along the way. You only get one chance to be young, so make the best of it. If I knew as a teenager what I know now, I would have taken granddad's words a little more seriously when he said, stay young as long as you can and grow up when you can't help yourself. <laughs> That's it. The end would be for noble. Thinking is the hardest work there is, which is probably why so few people engage in it. Change your thoughts 
and you change your world and everyone in it. Be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. Someone told me just recently, your thoughts cause your feelings. Oh yeah, that was your dad. Just remember, you can be a noble thinker and have a positive attitude. The A would be for achievement. Visualize your goals, short term and long term. Dreams seldom materialize on their own. You must do something to make them happen. And never regret the choices you make along the way. Good days may bring you happiness, but the bad days bring you experience. Both are essential in life, and all are God's blessings. In closing, I would like to say how proud I am to be your godmother, your favorite aunt, and your friend. And I know you're going to go forward and do great things. I love you very much. Yes. <laughs> Great minds think alike, huh? Great minds think alike. Okay, now we'll hear from her male elder, <laughs> Mr. Daryl Brooks, <laughs> who happens to also be Dana's godfather. Well, I don't know why she had to start out with that. That, that really hurt. <laughs> that really hurt me. Anyway, tomorrow is the first day of Dana being 16. Is that correct? Tomorrow would be 16 years of a beautiful flower being born. Beautiful flower. Today, I told Dana, you're the one. You are the the one. I meant it. Dana to me has always been very, very, very special. Very special. Not because uh, I was called late at night, say 3, 3.30 in the morning, uh, 16 years ago, tomorrow, there was one of our normal, abnormal, every 10 years, uh, 20 feet of snow that we get here in the metropolitan area. And that call came in and said, uh, Daryl, could you come pick me and uh, my wife up? I, I think uh, she's, she's ready to deliver. So I did say to them earlier that evening, you know, I have a four wheel drive. You can, if you need me, call me. I didn't think they would do it. <laughs> Especially that three in the morning. But they did, and uh, jumped up, put my clothes on, uh, made it to the car. All the roads were shut down. Wow. Snow everywhere. Made it there. I don't know how we got it back in the car, but we did. And uh, anyway, it was difficult getting out of there and into their neighborhood and then trying to get out of their neighborhood. And Wisconsin Avenue was, had been plowed and the side streets you couldn't get through. So we had to put my truck in four wheel drive and just drive as fast as we could, bust through a mound of snow and slid into Wisconsin Avenue and then shot up to. Uh, hey! What was the name of the hospital? Sibley Hospital. Sibley Hospital. We got them there safely. Uh, they thanked me. They got uh, we helped event out the car into the emergency room, and I they said thank you, and I went home. It took me about 40 minutes to get home. <laughs> took off all the wet clothes, got in bed, felt good about what I did. <laughs> Laid my head on the pillow, and the phone rang. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Mark. And he said, uh, Daryl, um, 
Uh, would you come back and get us? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> Say what? Uh, Yvette doesn't want to be here. We need to get a, get a ride over to uh, George Washington Hospital. I said, did you call any of your friends? <laughs> <laughs> Long story short, we went, I went and got him and took him to George Washington Hospital. And a flower, a beautiful flower named Dana was born. Yep. And I, I, I can't believe it's 16 years. Dana, I love you. You're beautiful. You are the one. And if there's anything I can tell you, if you're the smartest one in the room, find a different one. You want to be in a room with people as smart as you or smarter. You can always learn from other people's mistakes and yours. And from the outside looking in, you have a beautiful family. I know you have a beautiful family. Nothing, nothing comes before family. Very important. I think Yvette, you have done a great job. All by myself? Are you coming? <laughs> it's quite it's quite uh, but I am offended that I wasn't the godfather. I am offended that I didn't name wasn't Daryl. Her middle name wasn't Daryl. I've never been recognized. And, um, exactly. But bottom line, tomorrow is a beautiful day. 16 days of a beautiful flower being born. And if everyone can get Dana in their hand, she's real. Love you, Dana. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the next male elder, Brett Murray, who is my godfather. And he's going to talk about his relationship with him. Hello, everyone. All the dignitaries, invited guests, guests of all. Um, I guess I just wanted to tell a little story, and I guess that now that you're 16 and you're technically an emancipated minor, I guess it's time for you to know the truth. Um, Let's go. All started back, I remember it was one lazy Saturday afternoon, uh, morning rather, and I was sitting back with my ex, we won't go there, but I was laying back, and uh, we were having a lazy just kick back in bed, thinking, should we have children? Should we not have children? We're having a serious conversation about that. But since we did decide, and I want to say that point that I have two of the best children in the world, I want to get that out of the way. Okay. But I was a little concerned, because I was looking at my gene pool from my particular family, and the other side as well, and I was like, this is a little iffy here. You know, so I looked at Mark and Yvette's wonderful children. There was Ray, Mark, all of the children. I said, if I could guarantee my kids would be like that, I would go for it. So that day, we actually called over to Mark and Yvette and said, what are you guys doing? And we just kicked back home on a lazy Saturday. I said to Mark, as opposed to, but anyway, but it was, it was, it was just kickback, and I said, you know, if I could guarantee that my kids would be as wonderful as yours, I was thinking, you know, Yvette, what do you think about being a surrogate? <laughs> Whoa! And, um, so we talked about that for a while, and so then, you know, Yvette and I actually talked about it, we actually, you know, Got serious about having that conversation. Oh, Lord. So uh, went back and you know took Yvette back home to Mark. And Mark said, <laughs> you know, um, so did you guys um, decide to have uh, you know what did you guys do about the in vitro? And I said in vitro. Oh Lord. <laughs> okay. So anyway. Um, all right, big homie. All right, all right. Easy, easy, all easy, there. easy, <laughs> easy. There. I'm all that to say. Dana, come give me a hug. <laughs> Goes along with Daryl. Now, I also had a four-wheel drive. Oh, Lord. Uh, that day that Dana was born at, was it George Washington Hospital? I got a call 
since they've uh, exhausted all their points with Daryl at that point. And they said, can you give us a ride home? Because the same snowstorm was there. Wow. So I got down there, and you know, it's a lot of studies been done on birth order. Uh, you know, whether, you know, the first child, the second child, third child, and how they play in the family dynamics. And I just made notice that they just didn't seem like they were ready for that. <laughs> when I got there, um, they were like, okay, can you give us a ride home? And I said I would. And I, we came downstairs and they realized they did not have a car seat. Oh, easy. And they do not let the baby out of the hospital without a car seat. We actually had to sneak Dana out of the, you don't even remember that, do you? We had to sneak Dana out of the hospital, okay? They told me that I had to distract the nurse as we put Dana in the car, okay? So they knew that they said, go over and talk to her, and they know that, you know, I got mad game. So I was able to uh, go ahead and talk to her. And uh, they actually put Dana in the car. I don't know if you knew that story. And then we had to take her in the four-wheel drive through the snow without a car seat. Then we got back to the house, and we're sitting there, and Dana sitting there, and she had the prettiest eyes I've ever seen in my life. She was just sitting there, just a, just a happy child all the time. And she was kicked back there in, in, the, in the house, and Mark says, in the snow, keep in mind, it was probably about eight inches of snow still left at that point. Well, you know, at that point, most of it had been plowed. But after plowing, about eight inches still there, wanted to know, could I give him a ride over to mom and dad's house to pick up the crib? And I oh, said, y'all weren't Lord. ready for the crib? It, it was not, she wasn't premature. Didn't you know she was coming? <laughs> but anyway, so I'm just glad you're here. You are a wonderful, wonderful lady. We expect wonderful things for you. And... Go give your daddy a hug. No, that's right. Don't say that. anyway, oh. We love you very much, and we expect good things. Thank you. First one we bring up is Uncle Charles Jackson. Dan, you really are a blessing to the family. Now, I've known Mark since, well, Mark's always been an inspiration to me. He's been much older than me. I've always looked at Mark as a like a like a father, yeah, right. And uh, of course, you know the dance family. I mean, they always throw great parties. I mean, if you've ever been in one, oh, no doubt. Oh, no doubt. you guys have done it again. I said, oh no doubt, another great party. But um, again, I just really want to say that um, Dana, you are an inspiration to your family. Uh, you know, definitely anointed. You're definitely God's God's gift to us. You are um, creative. You're, you're beautiful, and I remember the day you were born because Mark called me. He didn't call me in the middle of the night because he knew I wasn't going to come, but <laughs> if I didn't know, <laughs> you just turned out like fantastic. We have nothing but great expectations for you. The bar has been set high for you from your older brothers and sisters, but we know you're going to exceed that tr uh, tremendously. Your, your education is going to really take you to far places. The yeah. fact that you attend the most prestigious high school in the Washington, D.C. area. Now, how many people here uh, go to McKinley Tech? Can you stand up, please? All right. Now, how many people attended Roosevelt High School? Sorry. <laughs> uh, McKinley Tech is in the house. Are we here, trainers? All right, all right. McKinley, right here. Oh, I tell you, I went to McKinley also, so that's probably where this is, is coming from. But, but again, man, I want to say that you continue to exceed all your expectations. You are definitely a blessing to your family. Uh, as I said, the bar has been raised high, so you have a lot of you know hurdles to, to get over. But I'm gonna tell you a, a, a few things. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In anything, pray about it. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do something. I have helped to raise Dana. I, I taught her the birds and the bees facts, and for those of you that don't know about the birds and the bees, my advice has always been to her, you know, that bees sting, birds poop, stay away from both of them, okay? That's, that's
Jazz. You yeah. can turn the world on with your smile. You can take a nothing day and suddenly make it all seem worthwhile. Help me. Well, it's you, girl, and you should know it. With each little laugh and every move, maybe you show sure it. Love is all around, no need to waste it. Here's your lucky chance, why don't you take it? You're gonna make it after all. Yeah. We're actually going to backtrack a little bit and do the inspirational song selection next by Gail Ship. I used to think that I could not go on. All right. And life was nothing but an awful song. But now I know the meaning of true love. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. If I can see it, then I can do it. If I just believe it, there's nothing to it. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. I believe. I can soar. See me running through that open door. I believe I can fly. I believe you can fly. We all believe you can fly. See, I was on the verge of breaking down Sometimes silence can seem so loud There are miracles in life you must achieve But first I know it starts inside of you if you can see it, then you can do it. Just believe it. There's nothing to it. Everybody, I believe I can fly. All right. I believe I can touch the sky. Think about it every night. See me running through that open door. I believe you can fly. We believe she can fly. We believe you can fly. Oh, 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 oh. if you just believe it, we believe you can fly. Okay, I had a, uh, a whole thing I wrote up for Dana and forgot it in, in my haste. So I'll just have to wing it. And so after some of these things that I said, it's, it's a little tough. But from a father's standpoint, you know, this kind of reminds me of uh, 
our 30 to 45 minute little jaunts in the morning when I have a captive audience at the end of dance. And I pull out the lecture sword. Much like to and from practice, to and from games with Mark. I had him right there. I had him saying anything I wanted to say. Passing every little worst of, of uh, advice I could. And sometimes then it was like this. <laughs> See? But uh, I think something is getting through. And uh, there's a lady that uh, Ray will read her letter or later. But uh, she calls uh, Dana my little project. She's my last, and uh, if uh, if you listen to Charles Jackson, <laughs> then the trainer, I'd say the best for last. And I have a different opinion on that because I'm a rough rider. I'm a rough rider. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but I just want to say that uh, in, in planning all of this, and I have to. Give credit where it's due. I do not know the high T is. <laughs> I probably still don't. <laughs> my wife and her infinite wisdom, and my daughter and her creative skill put all this together, and uh, it's kind of done in a very truncated time frame. And uh, that's why you saw us rustling around here as you entered. But uh, it is a labor of love, and
was fired during the time that uh, Michelle Reed had this mass firing of teachers. Uh, Dana felt very, very, uh, she was impacted by that, seriously, and she went downtown and testified before the city council when Mayor Gray was the chairman of the council. And uh, <clears throat> I think you, you know that when, uh, when she was there, uh, a number of the news media interviewed her. In fact, it was on channel, I think it was channel five, but uh, it was quite interesting because Dana felt very, very concerned about uh, that incident. And of course, uh, Vince Gray remembers that. Um, <clears throat> I think you all know this is a sophomore McKinley. Yes. And she is the president of her class. Let's go. Last year, when she was a freshman, she was the president of that class. So you can see she's got beautiful political uh, uh, things in her background there. In fact, <clears throat> when she was a freshman, one of my church members would come to me every day, Mr. Downs, your daughter, I didn't even know who you were. Your daughter, Dana, is running a campaign at uh, McKinley. She's, she's made up banners, she's handing out buttons, she talks to anywhere she can find a group of freshmen uh, gathered. And uh, she's running for president. Man, I don't know how in the world anybody else could even compete with her. Well, she did win. And uh, I was quite proud of her. But uh, this guy, you know, Mr. Uh, Money. They, uh, yeah, money. And uh, I was quite proud of that. But uh, she was really, uh, she's really quite a student. And I'm so very proud of her. Um, she, uh, I would expect her to really go places in life. Uh, I know that she's interested in biology and biological sciences. I understand that she would like to uh, be involved in either forensic medicine or uh, crime scene type of work. So I certainly hope that she will keep that in her sights and that she will be uh, successful at anything that she does. And uh, I've just got to tell you one thing that she is, that she's a little bit more than just, uh, just a little granddaughter. She is one of the best huggers I have ever seen. And whenever I can see her, and whenever I can get close to her, come here, Dana. She is a good hugger. She's a good hugger. That's my favorite little hugger. So thank you, and wish you very much success in everything you do. I know that you will be uh, for. Agreeing to do this in short notice, I think I asked her this week. Um, but I have another friend that came in town, and uh, I asked him to just come by. And uh, he is going to pleasure us with one selection real quick. And uh, I'd like for you all to put your hands together for Warren Fisher. This is nice, isn't it? How about another round of applause for the parents? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's so nice because, now see, I know Dana only vicariously through her dad and his bragging for 16 years, I've had to hear about you. <laughs> and, um, you know, I've known Mark, I guess, for at least 100 years and Daryl and other friends out here, we won't say how or where or why. But we've known each other for a long time, and I can honestly say that I've never heard Mark Down say a negative word about any human being, even human beings that I didn't like. And that, you know, says everything about what's been poured into Dana's character. So with that, I'm just going to give you uh, 
a, a few lyrics from a Sinatra tune, when, when you start to ask yourself about life and uh, what should you ask of life, maybe you'll consider some of these lyrics. Fly me to the moon. Oh, Lord. Let me play among the stars. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. You say to life, in other words, hold my hand. In other words, why don't you meet me? Fill my heart with song. Let me sing forevermore. You are all I long for, all I worship and adore. In other words, please be true. In other words, I love you. Changed I was until Dana came along. My dad has nicknames for all three of us. I don't know if you guys know, but the first nickname when I was born, my nickname was Goop. G O O P. I didn't know that. I don't know where he got it from, but it's always been Goop. My brother was born, and he got the nickname Big Guy. BG. <laughs> Dana was born. Does anyone know what he calls Dana? Little uncle. Dana Dane. Pretty as a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know Dana feels shortchanged a lot of the time because she thinks me and Mark gang up on her, but she's not true. We actually made a song for us. It goes, pretty, pretty, pretty as a picture. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm kidding. Oh, no. 
Hey, 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 young Ray, get him, get him, John. I'm the big sister, so you know, I gotta show what to do. Let's, Let's go. go. Because I'm the big sister, and I'm gonna let it go to the air, to the air, to the air. By the way, I'm gonna love you, but you're wearing better fits now because I ain't even gonna go there. Go! You wanna have a cheek, lady? Well, your hair's a little blondie, but you still love the kind of Let's go! You know you gotta shut the you know you gotta keep moving forward, but I don't know, it's gonna do your curveballs, so step up and pound it, but they got a mask on me, and I'll be able to lose that. Uh huh. Ooh, it's the baby. Ooh, bass guy, swag, swag. Yeah. Mama, 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 music. Murder eight. What? So. This is a very special time for you. You're turning a sweet sixteen. Congratulations. I'm sorry I can't be there to celebrate this momentous occasion with you, but I certainly wanted to take a moment to acknowledge a very special young lady. Over the past 13 years, I've had the opportunity to work with youth in the district on the prevention of substance abuse and use. One thing I've learned is that in this world, it takes all kinds of people to make a difference. And over the past year, you've done just that, made a difference. As you know, I've had the pleasure of knowing your parents for a while. Your dad used to bother me in nursery school. He was in high school. <laughs> and your mom, since she met your dad. While talking to your dad one day, I asked him if he knew of any youth in War 3 that would be interested in working with my organization, the National Capital Coalition to Prevent Underage Drinking, and the War 3 Core Prevention Center, and he quickly mentioned you. I also told him that you would have the opportunity to work on the tobacco compliance enforcement operations during the summer. Well, I hadn't seen you since you were a little girl, so when you walked into my office, I was surprised as to how much you had grown up to be a beautiful young lady. What I noticed next was so surprising, especially since your last name was Downs, you were shocked. <laughs> At first I said, wow, how does she make it in her household and how is she going to work with these wild and crazy teens and police officers? Well, to my surprise, you could hold your own. Not only did you have the courage to walk into stores and ask for cigarettes or alcohol, you actually made purchases, shy, quiet Dana. Since our initial meeting last summer, you have not only worked on compliances, but have joined our youth advocates group. As well, you have become a trained youth leader in the fight of substance abuse for the ward you live in, World 3. Dana, through your shyness, you step forward as a strong presenter and advocate, and I'm so proud of you for this. You're reliable, dependable, and have great passion for the work you do. A lesson that I've learned, be careful with shy folks. Because when they get in their minds to move forward on an issue, they move. NCCPUD thanks you for supporting our efforts, and I'm so proud to have you a member of our exclusive family. Keep up the good work. Happy 16th birthday, Nadine Parker. Every young woman should have some pearls, and so I got a little gift for Dana, and I just want to. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Show it off, Mama. Show it off. Baby.
stones today. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Just bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Almighty God, for 16 years of glory and favor, of honor and blessings in the lives of our families. And we thank you, Lord, that we're gathered here safely. We thank you for allowing us to just love one another as you commanded us. We thank you, Lord, for the life and blessing of our sister, our family member, of my niece, Dana Downs. Lord, we love you. We love her. And we surround love uh, each and every one of us as we part and as we go our separate ways, let us have traveling mercies. And we just praise you. This is just a time of giving thanks. We don't always have times to give thanks, and we thank you that we have this time to give thanks. And for that, we thank you even more. Thank you for each other, for one another. We can never say it enough. Amen. Thank you.